Welcome. Today, I'm going to show you how to perform compliant sampling for silica using equipment that includes the SKC PPI sampler that is listed in MSHA's final silica rule. To get started, you need the following. An air sampling pump, a working standard flow meter, a representative sampler for flow rate verification, calibration adapter, and two different lengths of Tigon tubing. First, I'll show you how to perform a flow rate verification and prepare the sampler you will need for sampling. Next, we'll create a sampling train and place it on a worker properly. Then, we'll perform a post-sampling flow rate verification. And finally, we'll prepare the sampler for shipment to a laboratory for analysis. Let's get started. Before we perform any flow rate verification, we are going to want to let our pumps run for at least five minutes. To do this, simply turn on the pump using the rubberized side button and touch the green start arrow icon on the screen. Once the pump has run for five minutes, go ahead and touch the stop icon on the pump. While the pump is running for five minutes, now is a great time to prepare our PPIs for sampling in the field. Locate the bag containing the PPI and remove its contents. Each PPI has a unique serial number for traceability and sample identification. Go ahead and record the sampling PPI serial number on the provided label and affix it to the back of the PPI. Having the serial number located on top and bottom of the PPI provides some redundancy in case one label is rendered illegible during sampling. Now that we have equilibrated our sampling pump and prepared our PPI for sampling, we're going to verify the pump's flow rate against a working standard flow meter, according to best practice. What you'll need for this process is the pump itself, the Checkmate flow meter, a representative sampling PPI, a calibration adapter, and several lengths of Tigon tubing. It's now time to assemble our flow verification train. Start by sliding the shorter length of Tigon tubing onto the barb on the right side of the Checkmate. Next, slide the tubing over the PPI calibration adapter. Next, firmly press the calibration adapter on top of the representative PPI. You will feel the calibration adapter slide firmly into place. Next, slide the longer piece of Tigon tubing onto the representative PPI. We have already let the pump run for five minutes, so it is now ready for a flow rate verification. With the pump turned on, select the gears icon on the bottom right of the pump. Next, select calibrate, and then manual. At this point, you will attach the free end of the Tigon tubing to the pump. Next, select the check mark and enter the desired flow rate. In our case, it's two liters a minute. As soon as you select the check box in the bottom right of the screen, the pump will turn on and your flow verification will begin. Allow the pump's flow to stabilize for a few moments before making any adjustments. When the flow has stabilized, use the up or down arrows on the screen to increase or decrease the flow rate of the pump. The goal is to have the display on the checkmate read two liters per minute. Slightly above or slightly below two liters a minute is acceptable. In our case, the pump flow reads 2.002 liters per minute. This is an acceptable value and the 2.002 liters per minute should be documented as our pre-sampling flow rate. When the pump's flow rate reaches the desired value, press the check mark on the screen to confirm and end the flow verification. Press the check mark one more time to enter the next screen. Remove the tubing from the flow verification PPI and set the flow verification train aside. The flow verification train can be used for additional pumps needing flow rate verification. Repeat the same steps outlined in this video. When you are ready to perform size selective sampling, 
remove the black cap from the PPI and connect it to the free end of the tubing from the touch pump. With the PPI firmly secured to the Tigon tubing, you are now ready to perform size selective sampling. The PPI should be clipped within the worker's breathing zone. The breathing zone is an area located within a 10 inch radius of the worker's nose and mouth. Ensure that the PPI will not be covered up with any loose clothing. Before turning on the pump, ensure that any loose tubing is secured and the pump is in a safe and secure location. Once the sampling train has been properly placed on the worker, do a final inspection to ensure that the sample will not be compromised. Like in this example, we are making sure that when the worker is seated, the hose will not be kinked and the pump is not in his way. At this point, you are now ready to press the pump start button and begin sampling. Take note of the time and document it as a sample start time. Here are a few sampling mistakes to avoid. In this example, the sample is not in the worker's breathing zone and the tubing is loose and can get caught. Not only is having unsecured tubing not a good idea for sampling, it can create an unsafe work environment. If the tubing is snagged, it can forcefully remove the PPI from the breathing zone, which may compromise the sample, and make sure the tubing is secured and out of the way. Once you have completed your full shift sample with the PPI, it is now time for a post-sampling flow rate verification. Turn on the Checkmate flow meter to prepare for flow verification. Before removing the sampling PPI from the tubing, place the included sticker over the four orifices. Once the sticker is applied, gently remove the tubing from the sampling PPI and replace the black vinyl cap. Set this PPI aside for now. Connect the free end of the tubing from the touch pump to the flow verification PPI. Press start on the pump and allow the flow to stabilize. Once the flow is stabilized, take note of the flow rate and document it as post sampling flow rate. In our example, the post sampling flow rate is 2.002 .002 liters per minute. Press stop on the pump and remove the tubing from the flow verification PPI. If additional pumps were used, perform the same post sampling flow rate verification for each pump and document the result. Acceptable ranges are plus or minus 5%. If you are sampling at two liters a minute, the acceptable range would be between 1.9 liters per minute and 2.1 liters per minute. Once all post sampling flow rates have been documented, it is now time to prepare your samples for shipment to an analytical lab. Each lab will have their own unique form to fill out, but each will require the following information. Sample ID or serial number, pre-sampling flow rate, post-sampling flow rate, start and stop time to calculate the total runtime. This information will be used in the calculation of the worker's full shift exposure to crystalline silica.